that overexploitation of natural resources leads to environmental damage, which represents a major threat to our societies. For example, overexploitation can lead to a scarcity of raw materials, jeopardizing the activity of companies that have contracted debts and, by extension, exposing the financial system to instabilities due to a physical shock. Biodiversity degradation can also increase social and economic inequalities and result in loss of income due to drought or limited access to clean water. In facing such challenges, how can we ensure a just and truly sustainable ecological transition that does not jeopardize the poorest country's development? Among the possible approaches, strong sustainability stands out. It proposes a long-term vision where the economic and social spheres can no longer exist independently of the environment. Strong sustainability articulates these interdependent spheres by considering that natural capital can no longer be totally replaced by human-made capital, such as social capital or economic capital. These capitals also depend on nature, since they are inevitably derived from it. Similarly, economic capital is intimately linked to human and social capital via knowledge or the institutions governing our societies. Therefore, strong sustainability is built on three main principles, the non-substitutability of capital, multidimensionality, and the social construct. Easy to say? To better understand, let's take the example of sea fishing. For a long time, it was assumed that fishery resources were infinite. However, there has been an overall depletion of fish stocks and stagnation of catch levels since 1990. The strong sustainability model argues that economic investments cannot compensate for environmental degradation. Once depleted, no technical progress can replace this natural capital. But there is more to it. To define a strong sustainability trajectory, we also need to take stock of the situation based on environmental, economic, and social indicators. A global diagnosis can be achieved by considering all these dimensions. Let us retake our example of fishing. To tackle fish stock decline, the analysis must integrate not only fish, but also all affected species. Consider the socioeconomic aspects of the fishery sector as a whole, from boat to plate. Today, it has become clear that fisheries resources management must be based on multidisciplinary perspectives. Finally, the strong sustainability approach requires that the different actors involved take into account, combine, and prioritize scientific findings to define a common trajectory towards a good state. A state where the economic sphere is not isolated and independent of nature and the world. This construction does not require the adjustment of the market via a price mechanism, but involves human deliberation, where, ideally, the principle of non-substitutability of capital is considered. In the case of fishing, this implies, for example, setting up fisheries management tools so as not to damage the capacity of the stock to renew itself. By engaging in this dialogue, the stakeholders concerned can agree on a common objective. Agreeing on joint goals to pursue is at the heart of marine spatial planning, in which the state and the local authorities play driving and coordinating central roles. This is the third strong sustainability essential principle. Building strong sustainability trajectories in the sea fisheries field, as in others, is a long and ambitious process with many challenges to be addressed. But it is undoubtedly an essential approach to build policies that harmonize all together biodiversity, social and economic development issues to sustain vital activities threatened with extinction.